the Danish Workers Museum. Is it something you should visit? Give me a second to find out and I'll get back to you on it. As we enter the Workers Museum, we walk up a great stair up to the Great Assembly Hall. It is this hall where people have hold fiery speeches, where they have been telling about workers' rights and we need to well, improve the rights of the worker. It is the hall where Le Internationale has been sung so many times. It is still used for political events from time to time, but it is not an often occurrence. But I talked to one of the curators who told me it is sometimes used for political events. And there's even the meeting rooms off to the side, which can be rented and used for events of different types. As you enter beyond the Great Hall, you start to enter an exhibit where they have recreated old shop windows and how shop would have looked back in the 50s and 60s. It is actually quite great to see how much of a similarity with today there is and how much of a difference there is because it is very different to experience this kind of shop facade. And some of these type of shops I actually remember from my childhood in early 90s but they have all disappeared today so there are some differences but there are still some similarities see if you can spot them when you enter the museum and you can see part of well, how the streets were looking and let's venture further into the museum because there are many other great things to see in this museum as we ventured in we saw these old recreation of apartments the first one circa 1970s, 80s, such a great recreation. I remember a lot of those things were still around when I grew up. But having a look into an old Copenhagen apartment as it was in the 70s and 80s, oh, it really gives you a great look into the living rooms. How were the dead dining arrangement? How was the kitchens? And I actually had a kitchen like that back when I grew up, so I uh, actually got a little bit of, well, nostalgic about it all. But today these kitchens are all renovated and they are smart and all these kinds of things, so, well, it has changed quite a bit since then. And the, the furnitures, I remember some of them. Today they are retro, that back then they were new. So there are a lot of things to see here, but we can move on to other apartments because there were other apartments, apartment recreations. There were the circa 1880s, which is over uh, 140 years ago. That is um, quite a big feat we have moved on. It is not a true full apartment, but it's most of it. We also have the apartment circa 1940s, where the dining room and the sleeping room for the working class were in the same room. So there has been a lot of changes throughout time and really go there and take it in and learn about how the development in Denmark has gone for the working class and how they were living back then up till now. As you move around the museum, even if you take a guided tour, you will find that this museum pays homage to not just the working class, but how society has developed over the last hundred years or so. You will find that it pays homage to the Danish model and how it can benefit well, employers as well as employees with a focus on the employees, of course. But if you look really close, you can actually see that it is more a depiction of the development of the Danish model and how it has affected the working class than just a museum. Oh, holy, holy, the working class is so holy. No, 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 no. It is much more than that. There's even a reading hall and, well, there's also one to a special Danish politician, but if you don't know Danish politics, well, you can skip the Anka exhibit, but it's actually quite great. Furthermore, there were a special exhibit with caricatures, which were actually quite interesting to see. It was a, an artist who has drawn for newspapers, magazines, for the Workers' Party, for the unions, and it was a depiction of his picture and how they have been part of changing well, society's look upon the working class. So, all in all, do I think you should visit? Yes. But let me just give you some stats from this visit. On a scale from 1 to 10, 
I will give this museum an 8. I do that because it is a great museum, but it is not perfect. And it has some great things to tell you about history. And there's even a kids area where kids can come in and touch things. That really draws it up. Step count on my visit, 8000. So yeah, it's great for raising your step count and you need to use some steps to get there and get back. So great for your step count. Accessibility, if you're in wheelchair, it is still accessible. There is an elevator and there is ease of access. And the boring part, the price. The price is 95 Danish crowns at the time I was in visiting. And you can buy a ticket to six museums, which is 249 Danish crowns. So I do recommend that if you want to see the other museums that you purchase the big ticket because it's half price all in all. If you want inspiration for more museums you should visit in Copenhagen, then click right here.